Instead, I'm going to introduce Kate Baker. Kate is professor of health economics here at the Harvard School of Public Health. She is one of the country's experts on the distribution and function of private and public health insurance markets. She's also spent two tours of duty in the government, most recently as one of three economists serving President Bush as part of his Council of Economic Advisors. Kate, thank you for joining. So let's, what I would like to do is frame out what I think are the key problems that this raft of legislation is trying to solve and look at a couple of the features that are included in a lot of them and see how successful they might be at solving those problems. There is clearly an overarching policy goal of making health care affordable to all Americans. Now that means putting health care within reach of the uninsured and keeping health insurance and health care affordable for those who are insured now. And that sounds like a, a relatively straightforward goal, but I think bundled in there are two goals. One that is relatively straightforward and one that is not straightforward at all. And it will come as no surprise that those two goals are related and that trying to solve one has profound implications for the other. The relatively straightforward goal is giving people the resources that they need to buy health care and health insurance. And if you are very low income or if you have very high health care expenses, the current uh, bundle of health care that's available to most people in the country may not be available to you. It's not affordable because of your low income or because of your high health costs. And one goal would be transferring resources to people who can't currently afford the care. So that's the relatively straightforward question because we kind of know how to transfer resources. There are different mechanisms, different ways of raising taxes, different ways of distributing those resources. We have to decide how much we want to do of that, but once we do, we know how to do it. The less straightforward problem, the even tougher problem, is getting high value health care out of our system. Part of the reason that health care is unaffordable for a lot of people is that we're spending a lot of money on care that's of limited value in terms of improving health. Now, in a way, that makes things seem easier than they actually are. Because if we could say, here's the health care that does a lot of good, and here's the health care that's kind of wasted, let's not do that. <laughs> That would be easy. We would all be in favor of that, and we'd be done. But of course, it's not so straightforward to say which you know, use of healthcare resources is really driving improvement in health, and which resources aren't doing such a good job. And even if we could evenly divide them into healthcare that provides high value and healthcare that doesn't provide high value, it would be pretty hard to write down a set of public policies that pushed resources towards this while withholding resources from that, because it's not so clear to write down a set of rules that defines, here's the health care that's doing a lot of good. Even providers don't necessarily know that. There's a huge gray area of medicine, and that's where we see a lot of the growth in health care spending. It's in things that we're not exactly sure who they're doing good for and how much good they're doing, and that poses a real challenge. Now, these two conflicting goals are obviously related in that the more we bring health care cost growth under control, the more affordable health care is for people, and the more affordable the subsidies that we need to target those resources towards people become. So, so that's the broad picture of the landscape. Let me try to then get into a few of the specifics of how different bills approach these problems and whether I think they achieve those goals or not. I'll start with the more straightforward problem of just getting extra resources to people who can't afford health care or health insurance right now. The questions that uh, policymakers face are how big should subsidies be? To whom should those subsidies be targeted? What's the mechanism through which they should be delivered? And one of the really contentious items in the debate is an individual mandate. Should there be an individual mandate to get health care or health insurance, and if so, how much are we going to subsidize people and what people are we going to exempt because the health insurance we're requiring them to get is not affordable to them. Now, I think we would all agree that getting everyone covered by insurance, especially when healthy, makes insurance markets function better. If you get covered when you're healthy and then some people are unfortunate and fall sick, those are uh, you then have more people across which to pool that risk. The goal of getting everyone insured is so that we as a you know, community then pool the risk of getting a bad draw and having an expensive health condition that we wish we had more resources to help cover. The individual mandate tries to accomplish that goal by getting everyone covered when healthy. It's very different from an employer mandate. And that's another bone of contention in the debate about getting more people covered. This one, I think, is often misguided. 
There is an idea that if you make employers kick in some money to health insurance, that then gets additional resources to people who can't afford insurance coverage and therefore will make insurance more affordable. The illusion there is that there are somehow some extra employer dollars to kick into the system and that if you just got stingy employers who don't provide insurance to pay for a little bit of the insurance that their workers would then be able to get, everybody would be able to afford more care than they can right now. The reason I think that that's an illusion is that really whatever employers kick in to any insurance policy comes out of workers' wages. It comes out of their wages because employers decide whether or not to hire people based on total compensation costs. 